and the usual boring CV up there on the left. And I just wanted to show that to point out that I do have a link to this area. <coughs> I spent my teenage years in Wellington, not far from here, and I, I know this area quite well. And I'm delighted to say I have three very old friends going back a long way to the early 1960s in the audience tonight. So great thing to become. The talk will be fairly simple. Uh, just so you understand about the oil exploration history in the wheel, then dealing with the company currently operating at Broadford Bridge and Wholesale, then going on to the earthquakes and the possible link uh, to the drilling, and then my conclusions and the way forward. So once upon a time, uh, in the wheel, people went about their daily business, blacksmiths, barriers, woodmen, charcoal burners, uh, stockmen, millmaids, cobblers, and all of them. You may not be aware of this, but between about 1960 and 1990, the oil men surveyed the wheel in quite a lot of detail by running seismic profiles up and down mostly roads. And you see there's a very detailed network there of some, what we call the seismic coverage of the, re of the region. Each one of these blue lines is a profile into the earth going down to several kilometers, enabling us to get quite an accurate picture of the geology, which really supersedes what the British Geological Survey can map at the surface, shown in the colors there, which give you very little detail. I will be alluding later on to this sample seismic line, which is made up of lots of separate surveys all joined together. And in today's money, the cost of all these surveys would be something of this order, 165 million pounds. And in conjunction with that, the oil companies drilled around about 150 wells. Each one is an average, let's say in today's money, of 3 million. So that adds up to this figure here, 465 million. And one of the good aspects of uh, UK regulation is that these data are all put into, in principle, in the public domain after four years of commercial confidentiality. They're not free, but you can buy them at a fairly modest cost, about 1% of the original acquisition cost, let us say. So these are the data that companies are now uh, tending to use. So back in the 70s and 80s, uh, the oil companies, who were all the majors of the day, I'll come on to that in a minute, they found a number of small oil fields, uh, as shown in green here, and some gas fields shown in red. And here in more detail uh, are the blobs, the technical elongate blobs, that's an oil field, Herriot uh, and Humley Grove, here's the little drop of oil field, this green blob here. And the control on how well we understand the structure, it, it's controlled by how closely spaced or apart all the seismic lines are, these profiles into the earth. So the typical figures for these little oil fields and gas fields that were found are these here. They were defined by these seismic lines, which are all two-dimensional. That is, it's along and down. It's not a, they don't indicate a volume of rock. And uh, then the drilling that was done in those days, up to the 1980s, was either straight vertical wells or slightly deviated. What has happened since then is the advent of horizontal drilling from the 1980s and onwards. So back in the old days, what we ended up with in the wheel was what I call a benign cottage industry of small-scale oil fields with their nodding donkeys. And technically, I have no problem with that. Um, it, it was all fine. And the companies, they may, not, they may or may not be honest, once you know how they operate, but they were certainly generally technically competent. But since then, in the last 10 years or so, there's been a new phase of exploration all over England, um, starting with this uh, so-called fracking revolution, but I'm not going to mention this F word uh, anymore tonight. But down here in the Weald, there was the most amazing discovery by a little startup, which is currently four years old. It's a financial instrument, basically. 
It has no prior uh, UKO experience. Uh, but what they announced was you know, the so-called Gatwick Gusher. This huge discovery just north of Gatwick Airport at Horse Hill. And for some reason, I don't understand how, but for some reason all these major companies, these are familiar names, they have overlooked this. It is amazing, isn't it? And not only that, they estimated at the time in 2014, 2015, this huge oil province under the wheel could be three times the size of the whole North Sea. It's absolutely astonishing, isn't it? <coughs> However, I consider these companies who are now operating, and there's a list of them down on the left, Argas, Dart, Ineos, Quadrilla, Celtic Energy, who've now gone, UCO, we'll be talking about tonight, and Angus Energy. They're all cowboys, not in the sense of Tex Ritter or the Lone Ranger, but in the sense of your cowboy builders. They're coming in, they're taking the oil data, now available for 1% of its original cost, and they're just reinterpreting it and coming up with brash new explanations, and then they're drilling some rather uh, severe and technically very difficult wells. So I've made up a list, I won't go into it in detail tonight, of the incompetence of these companies, and also if they've had misleading behaviour. Here's the list of uh, my comments. I will only be commenting tonight on UCOG, the one shown in blue here. So I have good reason for calling these companies cowboy companies. They are technically incompetent and in many, many cases they are rather dishonest. The problems with the new, this, the advent of the new style of exploration in the wheel after it all grew fallow for a good decade or more, is that the potential benefits to be gained by finding new oil or elsewhere in England gas have been greatly exaggerated by these new companies. They take a very short-term view of what they call their assets and their discoveries. The aim is really to pump up their share price. I have consulted in the past for one or two of these small companies and I know how they operate. They're frequently mendacious Quadrilla told some very serious lies uh, in Lancashire uh, around the time of the so-called Blackpool earthquakes in 2011. Angus at Brockham is not to be trusted, where they drilled a well uh, for which the permission had expired 10 years previously. I think their management is often dodgy and underqualified, and some of the companies are just underfunded they're in danger of going bust or they have huge overdrafts. And not least, uh, they're frequently technically incompetent, which I'll be showing later. Some of them like are ar uh, arrogant or overextended, like, um, you know, the richest man in Britain, although he now lives in Monaco, uh, Jim Rat Cliff. <laughs> <laughs> there's a, there, there should be a hype in there, shouldn't there? Uh, where he has taken a take out hundreds of square kilometres of shale licences, which he has no possibility of exploring in the official time available. He's obviously just hoping that the government will keep granting extensions until he can get around to drilling, if he ever does. So part of the problem, the technical problem with the new exploration, is the data spacing, the spacing apart of these seismic lines shown with brown was okay for the simple oval structures that they were looking for, followed by vertical drilling. But it's inadequate for the modern phase of highly deviated or horizontal drilling of wells. The potential solutions to this, technically speaking, you could force the companies to restrict their drilling to the plane seen as an image on a vertical seismic section. But they rarely do this, they go off at all that sorts of angles, drilling in the dark in, in effect. You could ask them to increase the density of the two-dimensional seismic coverage, but of course, this is all going to cost them money, so they don't like to do it. Or, even better, as has been done in Lancashire and Lincolnshire, they should do a three-dimensional seismic survey, where over the area of interest, you get, end up with a whole volume of geological data which you can then look at into uh, in three dimensions, and it transforms your understanding of the geology. So I'm going to go on now to 
concentrate on UK oil and gas, PLC or UCOG, firstly at Brighton Bridge and then at Horse Hill before we go on to the earthquake zone.